Today I'm going to show you how to make a comparative bar graph. The importance of a comparative bar graph is to look at um, different pieces of information and how they compare to each other. Let me show you a quick example on my statistics project. Um, this right here is a comparative bar graph. So you can look at this graph and you can tell that males prefer uh, math more than females just looking at the graph. I did it on percentage, did it based on percentages so that I can compare my data. Um, and then you can, but you can also look at this and see that uh, math was the favorite subject among all of them. Um, and you can see all different pieces of data here, but it, this one compares males to females. So I've got a different piece of data. I've got a different question on my Survey Monkey that I want to look at. Um, this question where I asked um, if you love it, if this is do you love math? Love it, it's okay, or hate it? And so right now I have filtered out with my females. I think, no I don't. I don't have anything filtered out. Um, if you don't know how to filter out, it's pretty quick. Um, there's another video that walks you through it, but I can show you really quickly if you click filter by question and answer. Um, you want to filter out by male or female. I'm going to choose male and I'll go down to the question so it says just all, this is all my males, 41 of them, and their responses. So then I can write down, and again, because I surveyed, when I surveyed more males responded than females, I'm putting mine in percentages. Um, you can put yours in frequency if you want to, um, but again, I wanted to compare mine equally, and so because I had so many more males that responded, I'm doing mine in percentages. So I'm going to put in 51%, love it. 46% um, say it's okay, and only 2% said they hate it. Um, so I want to write that information down. And this can also easily go into a frequency table. And again, you can have frequency tables and bar graphs, comparative bar graphs being the same thing. And then I'm, gonna, I'm going to edit my rule, change it to females, take off males. There we go. And now it's just my females. And if I go down to this question, um, I can write down my responses here. So once you have your information written down, you can go in and you can make your um, you can make your graph. So we'll make our graph. Let's go to our class website, spencermath7.weebly.com. It's going to take you here. Um, if you click Units of Study, Statistics. Scroll down. Here's the videos that you'll be watching, and I'll post this video um, for you to see. If you click on Circle and Bar Graph Creator, it's right here. Box Plot Creator is down here, but we're going to do a Bar Graph Creator. So we're going to click on Bar Graph, and you can change things around if you want to. You can play around with this, but I'm not going to go into any of that. But I will tell you that if you click on data, we need a title. All of them want to have a title. Um, math. I'm going to put love, okay, hate, question mark. Um, X-axis label, that's the horizontal one that goes underneath. And you can put responses. You can get creative there. Um, the Y-axis label, you could put frequency. But since I did mine in percentages, I'm going to put percent. And then source, you don't really need a source. Um, that would be helpful if you pulled this from somewhere else. Um, because I only have three answer choices, love, it's okay, and hate, I'm going to have three items. But I am comparing two groups. I'm comparing males to females, so I'm going to put two groups here. So now it brings it up, and if you look at it, it kind of looks like a frequency table here. You've got your two, you've got your title. You've got your items, so I'm going to put males here, I'm going to put females here, and I'm going to put love, it's okay, and hate. And then for values, I'm going to put in my percentages that I had, 51, and then 43 females said they love it, it's okay, 46 and 54 and hate two and four. 
Now for minimum and maximum value, if you leave this alone, it will do it based off of the data that you currently have. So you don't really even need to do anything with that unless you want it to start at zero. Um, if you're adamant about your graph starting at zero, then you might want to put zero as your minimum value. If you click on labels, you can change things. You can change the font if you want to, background color. Like I said, this is something you can play around with, but I'm just going to go to preview. And there's my graph, and this is the way I'm pretty good with it. Um, mine does start at zero because I had one that was two, but it only goes up to 60, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, this just shows my comparison of my data. Now, the way you get it into your paper, if you just right click on it, you can copy image, and then make sure you either go to Google Drive or um, Google Classroom, and you can, that way you can pull up your statistics project. Let's see if you go into Google Drive. It should be the one of the first ones you did since so you've been working on it, and I already have mine pulled up right here. So I'm going to insert my graph right here. Control V will allow you to paste it. And so there's my there's my graph. You can if you click on it, it will allow you to make it smaller or larger depending on how you want it to look. Um, and remember, we're going to format. Um, at the end of it and we're going to embed these graphs into our paper so don't necessarily worry about how large or small it is right now that's something that we'll work on um, the last few days before it's due i hope this video is helpful and by this you should be able to do a comparative bar graph